Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Wink, and in today's video, we're going to be going over something called topology, topological and data analysis, and we're going to be making a trading strategy with it. Well, not really, but we'll get into that. Um, this was asked of me, someone wanted me to make a video on top topology, and topology is one of those realms of mathematics that I always wanted to get into, but just never did, because it always just seemed way too confusing for me to just quickly understand something. And I still think that it is, but I got a good way to go about this, I think. So without further ado, let's take a look at the strategy. Simple, pretty much a buy, glorified buy and hold on the SP 500 with 11 trades, win rate of 70%, loss rate of 30, and about one to one risk to return. So now how did I get to this? Well, this gentleman, Christian Velasquez is who we're going to be learning from today because I knew as much about topology as you did afterwards. So I found this article and I was like, okay, let's quant connect if I this, this thing, this strategy. So let's read a bit of it. I don't want to spend the whole time reading, but let's learn a bit. So uh, let's just start at the beginning. Every trader knows the feeling of dread when the market takes an unexpected plunge. One minute everything is going smoothly and the next your portfolio is in the red. Hours spent dissecting charts and seeking patterns, you start to panic what's happening, why is the market crashing? Investors, analysts, and even casual observers collectively hold their breath, eyes glued to screens, hoping that the financial world won't crumble. But as much as market crashes and downturns are devastating for investors, they are a fact of life. However, what if there was a way to predict and at least catch a glimpse of the market's next crucial moves before they happen? This is where topology comes in. Topology is a branch of mathematics that studies shapes and spaces. Before you raise an eyebrow, let's consider it. Instead of looking just at peaks and troughs, what if we start to understand the intrinsic shapes formed within the market's EBB and flow? Topology offers a fresh and I dare say revolutionary perspective on these patterns. In this article, we'll be exploring how to use topological data analysis to spot potential market crashes and downturns in the SP 500. Also provide Python code to dis, um, to implement the techniques discussed. So this is the SP 500 on the top, and this is the Wasserstein distance over time on the bottom. You can see whenever we break above this threshold, it corresponds to a downturn in the market. So what is TDA, topological data analysis? Topological data analysis offers a way to study the shape or topology of data. Imagine plotting a scatter of points in space, and then instead of focusing on the individual points, you try to understand the overall shape they form. TDA allows us to see pattern holes and other structures in data that might be invisible using traditional methods. At its core, TDA asks a simple yet profound question. What is the intrinsic shape or structure of my data? It doesn't care about, the, about distances or specific locations as much as how data points are connected and how they cluster together. Persistence homology. Persistence homology is one of the key tools in TDA. At a high level, it helps us understand the holes in our data at various scales. Imagine you have a Swiss cheese slice. Persistence, persistence homology would not only tell you that there are holes in the cheese, but it would also tell you how big those holes are and how they would change if the cheese were might worth if we were to melt the cheese slightly. Mathematically, persistence homology is captured by something called a barcode or a diagram. It is a connection of intervals where each interval represents a feature like a hole in the data. The start and end of an interval tells us when a feature appears and when it disappears as we change the scale. I'm not going to go over formulas too much because I am going to link this and I just want to get the concept down and then go into code. So the Wasserstein distance. And now let's talk about Wasserstein distance. Think of it as a measure to compare two persistence homologies. Imagine you have two piles of sand representing two sets of data. The Wasserstein distance in essence measures the least amount of effort you'd need to move the sand grains around to transform one pile into the shape of the other. The less effort, distance, the more similar the two piles are. If you have to move the sand around a lot, it means the piles are different. In mathematical terms, given two sets of data points, the Wasserstein distance calculates the minimum moving cost to match the data points from one set to another. Formally, given two pers persistent diagrams, D1 and D2, the Wasserstein distance measures the minimal effort to match the features from D1 to D2. To the, um, defined by this formula. While these ideas may sound complex, they give us unique lenses to view the, to view and compare data. 
In the context of the stock market, it offers a method to determine how similar or how different two patterns, two periods might be based on their underlying patterns. So when this restarts, or already restarted, you can see all those points. Those points are always done at a kind of a unique time. They're done at tops, right around there, they're done at bottoms. They're done at, they're done at breaks of lows, right around here. This one, there it is, right? And so this measures the Wasserstein distance between data set one and data set two. So on the left, the S&P 500 stock prices unfold over time through topological techniques, expanding loops, surrounding price segments, working as a lens, focusing on data structures, clusters. These loops highlight regions of interconnected price movements, revealing underlying market patterns, trends, or anomalies. On the right, the Wasserstein distance measures the cost of transforming one set of points to another, in this case, segments of log returns. The influence areas, the influence areas around these points adjust, symbolizing the relative importance of each point. A spike in this distance can hint at significant market shifts. Taken together, both plots underscore the transformative power of topological methods in interpreting complex data sets, the way these methods handle variation in scale, be it in loops, around stock prices, or dynamic computation of distances between points shows, their, shows to their capability to unearth data's inherent patterns, correlations, and disparities that might remain unnoticed through conventional analytical means. Application to financial markets. So why TDA? Financial markets by the very nature are multi-dimensional and teeming with intertwined relationships and feedback loops. Traditional analytical methods, which are often linear or assume certain paramedic structures, might miss out on capturing these complex interactions. I actually have a friend who is doing some work forecasting expected loss of options, an implied move for um, the, length of the, the lifetime of the option. And he's not as pure math as me, so he'll ask me for help, um, run things by me. And one thing I always tell him is always overshoot risk. Never think that one period can be less risky. It can always be riskier. Always forecast for the most heinous things to happen. Because they happen. They do. They really do. So let's keep on going. Cool. Now we get into code. I'm going to link this article in the description for people to read. But now let's get into the code. So some parameters right here, just using spy. So we got some parameters right here. Our look back value, our threshold, this rips variable, a rolling window of closes. That's what we're going to use it for. Setting a one up. So now if you notice, I'm using self.lookback times five. I'm going to get into that when we actually get into the function. But so now let's just go over on data, checking to see if we're warming up, checking if we have data adding that data to our rolling window, checking if our rolling window is ready, getting a NumPy array of closes, and then getting the log returns of them. So I actually, this doesn't need to be self, but whatever, I'll leave it. <laughs> so because these are, this is a NumPy array, I get a NumPy array, which is nice because that's what the function needs. So let's go to this function. Compute the Wasserstein distances link to the article. And so this is why I did look back times five, because we have window size, which I'm passing in look back. And we also have this log returns in the pi array, and we're checking the length of that. So if we're doing, let's say the look back is 10, right? So if we do 10 minus, it'd be 20 plus one, that would be nine negative nine can't have a negative shape a negative dimension so that's why we have to do that we have to separate it like that so that way we can look at chunks of the market because then we see for i and range n so that separates our market into chunks so now i guess we see we start at a different point every single time so and this is just a um, using MP full with NAND values. Just makes a, a little spot to store our data. Fills it with NANDs for now. 
So now this is our Weierstrass-Stein distance. So we're getting two segments, making sure that the segments are big enough, making two dimensions fit transform, and then we're checking to see the distance between the two di uh, diagrams, the two dimensions. And we're appending that distance to this, and that's what we return right here. Now my approach that I took is I just summed it because it is a array, a numpy array. So I just summed it. And that's how we get, whoops, yeah, a lot of debugging. <laughs> that's how we get this value. It's the sum of all of it. So now we have to actually trade. If you notice too, I didn't have any risk. I just commented it out because I'm checking to see if we're short our equity. If we are short, we're checking to see if our distance goes back below our threshold. If it does, go long. Close your existing position. That's what this true is for. Sell our previous holding and go long or cover it technically and then go long it. If we're, if the if this is not true, just keep on holding your short. And then the, the exact opposite for if we're long to get short. And then this down here just for the first trade, right? Because when we first started, we're not long or short. So yeah, that is the code. That's how to compute it in Quant Connect. You get a result like this. Um, definitely something I want to look into a bit more. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. I think it could be cool to kind of do a Hearst exponent kind of vibe and really divide it into chunks. You know, get lags into it instead of this. This method I think is fine. Obviously works, but I would want to just try it different ways. So yeah, um, I'm going to put a link to this article in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Wink. I have a business called Prometheus Analytics. I make trading indicators and provide them to people for a monthly subscription fee. Link to that is in the description. And pretty soon I'm going to have a freelancing thing actually up and running. So if you actually want me to create an algorithm for you, we'll be able to get that squared away. If you want me to just consult for you, get an opinion, have that as well. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm not going to say much else. Leave some things on the table. Get some surprises ready. But everything links to cool stuff. This code, that code, all the code. It's going to be in the description. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment any other suggestions you may have. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.